All right, folks. So Star Citizen Live just ended, and it's with Chad McKinney. Uh, a lot about cargo stuff. I'm really hoping we get into some good questions about the, the nitty-gritty cargo hauling and how it's going to look and work, and maybe some more stuff with reputation. We'll see what happens. Either way, thank you for joining me for this. I hope you enjoy whatever they have to say and also my annoying content, uh, my, my commentary over the top. Let's get into it. Joining me on the show this week uh, is an esteemed uh, friend of the show, a, a, a man who probably needs no introduction, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, let's throw it to Cargo Chad. Cargo Chad, how you doing, man? Cargo doing Chad. Doing good. How about yourself? I'm in a mode where I'm assigning nicknames. He's even everybody. got the squat uh, rack you're in the back. Cargo Chad, and oh, there's the Hydro. My God, really? The I homies, can't. and I'm pretty sure uh, next week's show is is about. Uh, you can't pause by spacebar on Twitch. What year is it? Commander stuff in a in arena three. I think I called Duncan Duncan Arena Man. Um, I don't know. There's just I'm at a point where I clearly should be stopped, and nobody is. Uh, so yeah. We're going to jump right into it because we have a lot of questions and stuff. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, maybe four weeks ago, uh, we had an Inside Star City. Pedro, thank you for the memberships on YouTube, my friend. Appreciate you, dude. Uh, talking about cargo, hangar. Uh, hangers, persistent hangers, personal hangers, freight elevators, uh, all a bunch of really exciting stuff for the non-combat oriented uh, citizen of which there are many, many of you out there. I count myself as one of them. Um, this is work that's all targeted for Alpha 323. Uh, and recently, as I'm sure most of you or many of you might have noticed, uh, with the, this week's roadmap, roadma uh, roadmap roundup, it's a hard thing to say out loud. With this week's roadmap roadmap roundup, um, it was recently revealed that the cargo, that the uh, instance hangers, the freight elevators, uh, the item kiosks, everything that's in that little, that little cargo package, that cargo career update uh, that's coming, still coming in the Alpha 323 branch, uh, would not be in the initial uh, release. Uh, the initial release being 323.0, and then there might be a 323.1 and a 323.2, and so that stuff's still being worked out and determined. Uh, it will still be in one of the subsequent releases, whether, again, whether that is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, uh, whatnot, remains to be seen. Um, Joining us, so Chad, um, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, tell everybody who you are, because in case somebody didn't see the show, tell everybody who you are, what you do for Star Citizen, and what happened. Yeah. So, uh, starting with the easy questions. Uh, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Chad McKinney. I'm a senior lead gameplay engineer um, currently in the Los Angeles studio. Uh, mainly focused on Star Citizen, so I'm part of the core gameplay group. I have a kind of sub-team in that group called CGP7, uh, but we mainly focus on what I would say are like the features that make Star Citizen like unique. So like the big MMO style gameplay features, Cargo is like certainly one of, one of the big ones, one of the big careers, right? So our team is really focused on those features, um, and certainly over the last several years, that's been a really big focus for us. So any of the big cargo stuff that you've seen coming out over that time, physicalized cargo, whole C, all this stuff has been my team's main focus. Um, but we've worked on a lot of other stuff throughout the years. Um, but yeah, like, so what happened with cargo? I actually just released a video that references all those changes on the main channel if you want to check that out. Um, well, the first thing I was like, hey, it's like, I don't know that there's anyone that's like more personally invested in seeing this like through than I am. So it was disappointing to come to the conclusion that we did need to pull it from 323 or push it into, you know, a point patch, but it was the right call. And there's a lot of factors that went into that. Um, just to kind of get into it, like the first thing is that it's a really, really big, it's not even, I don't even think you can call it a single feature set. It's like a whole change to the way that the game works from top to bottom in many different aspects. So whenever we started concerted development on this last year, you know, we come up with a certain schedule and, um, at the end of the day, if you look at where we're hitting, you know, while it is disappointing to see it slip, we're really close actually. It's like. It's, it's kind of like uh, throwing a dart at like a target, like a mile away, 
you know, we are a bit off. We missed the target, but we're not so far off. It's not going to be like, you know, six months from now or anything like this. Yeah, it sounds like it's a couple months sort of delay. If they were pushing it to this point where they delayed it at this point, I know Tinfoil, they were just trying to hype up the patch until the last minute and then drop this feature out of it. Honestly, I think they would have waited longer if they were trying to do that. This just seemed like they really wanted to get it in. And the very last moment of go, no go, they decided they couldn't do it, which in my opinion, my mind means they must not be that far away. That means that the underlying tech works. They said at least that they're trying to get rid of edge cases, um, which means that for the most part, the feature is good to go. It's just still got bugs, which, you know, we're used to that, but it's still got bugs, bugs, bugs that are obviously blockers. Um, I do hope though that when we do get it, this means we're good to go. And I kind of... I wish it wasn't as disappointing as a delay, but you know, that's how things are. It's not like they could have, well, they could have put it on the patch for the second quarter of this year, uh, third quarter, but if it's a month off, if it's two months off and that updates in August, then I guess they'd put it on this one first. Either way. So it's a bit disappointing that it missed the release, but we are really close. <laughs> but so like the first thing is just like, it's big and it's hard to estimate and, and quite pin down all the unknowns and everything and, and make sure that like your dates are exact by the time uh, the actual date comes up. So we're a little bit off on that part, but there's also just been a lot of things that have happened during that time. Uh, some of the stuff towards the end that have really informed that decision-making are the fact that there's still some feature work that needs to be finished out. Um, there's some iteration that we're still doing on certain aspects or that we did on certain aspects of the design once we got things up and going in particular uh the freight elevator kiosk ui and the item bank ui once we played with them a bit we realized we needed to update them and change them to make them a better experience and then on top of that in particular the hangar instancing asop and transit kind of flow graph there about going from all these different stages of gameplay uh, had some stability problems and it's the kind of thing that I really felt strongly that we can't go live with that being not really stable because if we do and it ends up being a problem the game essentially becomes unplayable <laughs> for the players yeah that's messed so up it's, it's not like you know like if we, our our package our box delivery missions are already broken and that sucks but imagine if all of the things related to inventory was broken looting putting on your armor getting your ships your vehicles storing armor storing loot buying stuff selling stuff like that would suck if the underlying system there somehow had a catastrophic problem that better not happen when it comes in <laughs> if we went out with salvage and maybe there's some issue with salvage or if we go out with mining or you know the rocks sometimes crash your client like that that is really unfortunate Obviously, that affects a small subset happen. of people yes this is the kind of thing where the game could literally just be unplayable. You can no longer players. summon your spaceships. You can no longer load your spaceships. It's a, yeah. it's a pretty heavy thing. So like in comparison, like ever since 318, we've been a lot more cognizant of what kind of risk we want to take on whenever we're going into the release. So whenever we were coming up on the 323, we were really aware of how big this was and also really aware of like the current state of 323 without all of that feature work. And because 323 was already needing some more time to be focused on to stabilize and improve performance, we didn't want to just rush this in and then take something we already spent a certain amount of time hardening on 323 and then just destabilize it all again. And we'd probably just like reset our whole release kind of pipeline there. But also then taking on all the, the new risk for the cargo work. Um, but we are in a child stream of the release stream. So that means that like we're ready to go. Anytime we want to, we can just pull the trigger and, and release it. We're we're right there. So it's not like it's stuffed away and and you know, some development stream that's like, you know, still in, in a bunker somewhere. Like we're we're really close. It's it's going through the already, you know, certain steps of the release phase is just we weren't ready we didn't want to integrate it because of the risk and already the the state of 323 itself um but on top of that like to be completely when he said harden to the ptu i believe he, he was saying harden 3.23 after they got 
these freight elevator stuff in, harden that feature so that it works better throughout the patch. I think that's what he was saying. Honest. There, this this feature has been around, like I said, for, for quite some time. And there's been a lot of things that have happened just kind of outside the feature that have also contributed to it. So like, as people are probably aware, there's been some team restructuring, personnel changes, um, you know, changes to our like kind of vision and, and direction that have, you know, in particular, I think impacted like the team working on this feature set. So it's made it a challenge at times to, you know, stay focused on it and, and, and not be uh, affected by all that people changing, bringing people on board and getting them up to speed about, you know, the whole project and, and everything. So it's, it's been a, a whole journey, but we're really close. Um, it's, it is disappointing to, to put in this much effort that we've put into it and then miss it. But, um, I felt like it was the right call. So. I, I appreciate, I appreciate your candor on that. Uh, folks, I appreciate the call. I really want this feature. This is going to be a great feature, great change to the game. But at the end of the day, like stability is the most important part of this at this point, people are playing this, like it's a real thing. And um the more stable the game can be the better that is new features are awesome but like how often do you hear people saying why don't they fix all the bugs this is them at least trying to proactively take care of the major bugs that might make the features worse and we know more bugs will pop up but i'm glad that they're going to make the call like that and uh make sure 323 comes out and we can enjoy the stuff that's actually in it so the chat right here are saying oh so they don't want another 318 they admit it yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I didn't yeah, I, I, we, I we don't either. Have, I would not have thought that would have been a surprise to to anybody or a mystery to anybody. Um I am often quoted as saying, you know, we have the same conversations that our backers have. I, I, I'm just so I'm, I'm going to talk to you, John. I'm going to talk to them. We have the same conversations you guys do. We just have them a few weeks earlier. We have the same concerns, we have the same excitements, we have we take the same blows to the head uh it's and yeah three uh 323 hit us as much as it hits you uh as in the in the heart and the head uh in the fields uh we we don't want we don't want that to happen again is this me sitting here saying that it's never going to happen again no i'm not going to sit here and say something will never happen but everybody here is working very hard to make sure that it doesn't happen again and decisions like this one are one of the things that have to be done in order to ensure that uh, from time to time. So it is still 323, uh, it is still uh, 323X, uh, whether that's 323.1 or 323.2, it's too early to say. Not one, whether that's, no way. Uh, before Invictus, at Invictus, slightly after Invictus, it's too early to say. Uh, but yeah, like, like, like Chad said, it's all there, it's all still in the branch. It's basically when everything else is stabilized, and secure and in a place that we're happy and whatever, then it's like, okay, now let's introduce this. That'd be crazy if it was point one, but and we'll see. And see how that affects things and fix those things. Cause yeah, it's, Chad made another great point. This is literally your ability to summon and access your spaceship. It's, it's a fundamental change to the way everything moves in the persistent universe. So it is not a small feature, but uh, 323 has a whole bunch of other features. We're currently 13, 13, 14 episodes in this season. It's normally on 10 episodes. We got a bunch more coming. It's a huge, huge patch even without this. So we'll get all that stuff in, stabilize all that stuff, and then turn our attention back to this. Well, Chad's attention probably will never turn. All right, so with that, let's jump right into the questions here. Tell us about the things, uh, the this stuff. This, this uh, uh, show was originally scheduled for two weeks ago. Uh, so we put up a thread and collected questions. Um, we didn't have the show two weeks ago because uh, uh, Jared fell down and knocked himself out. True story. Actually. Wait, really? <laughs> I knocked myself out. Got a concussion. And people were like, they're trying not to give us information. This dude just went and pulled a Jared. I hope you're okay, my friend. I really do. That's not fun to knock yourself out, and it's also not fun to have a concussion, and I hope that Jared's recovery from that was okay, and he's doing okay. Don't do that again to yourself, man. We need Space Daddy. Mostly back in normal now. Got a haircut. 
Uh, so we're going mean, to jump into this. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> you can't tell the difference between concussed Jared and non-concussed Jared? <laughs> Neither could my mom. All right. So uh, we collected a bunch of questions. We're going to just jump right in. Uh, yeah, first... he, he started an hour early because, no, that's a mean joke. Let's, let's talk about the personal hangers for a while. We'll get into overall cargo gameplay and stuff. Uh, but let's, let's, we have a bunch of questions that are focused cargo! primarily on the hangers. Let's jump into those. One of the big questions folks had after they watched ISC was, how do we prevent unwanted people from getting into our personal hangar? Shoot them. I mean, obviously, there's some kind of uh, a security around the elevator. And Shoot them. Uh, we recorded for ISC, but it didn't make the cut at the Shoot time. Shoot them. Uh, but also, what stops people from just charging the outer doors? Shooting them. And getting in there. What can you tell us about access restrictions? Yeah, so the first thing I'll say is what, with everything, this is like the first release of this. So what we come out with now isn't the necessarily like our final vision or where we leave it and i can tell you that we already are going to continue working on this after this release so there's going to be more to be done all around but um for this release the way that it's going to work is if somebody who is not in your party somehow ends up in your hangar then what's what we'll do is we'll treat it kind of similar to the impounding behavior that we have for the landing areas where they'll get a bit of a warning, but then soon thereafter, they're gonna get, just get kicked out and teleported out into the station. If they're in a ship, the ship will get impounded and that'll be that. It's in an armistice zone, so the players won't be able to like draw weapons or shoot or anything like this. <sighs> um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, we do want to make sure that like players aren't just, you know, murdering each other in there. Um, but we can do better. Like I said, we want to have improved security in the future and make it a more uh, less gamey kind of experience okay. to have See, heightened security in there. That's literally what I, I was about to say. This is like the NPCs loading ships thing. Why doesn't he also mention that this should be changing the security in the future just so we have that confidence of knowing that's still their plan? And that's what he's saying here. At some point, armistice zones will be gone and you will be able to enforce it yourself, I think is what he's saying let's just a little bit just to confirm a more uh less gamey kind of experience to have heightened security in there but it is just going to be using the impounding and teleporting behavior for this release okay does that include see so obviously there's, there's some Love time that. limit there, there's, there's some time period Murder! Uh, a couple seconds whatever uh if i grab some if, if i get in there really fast and i pick something up <laughs> before i'm impounded do I, do, I, do I teleport out with my stolen booty? Uh, you, you will, but I mean, it'll be considered stolen at that point. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah. So you like, can steal stuff. There's more to be done there, I think, to make that like a more well-founded experience. But like for now, yeah, you'll, you'll get it, but it, it will have been stolen. Oh. I think it'll probably prove challenging to do a lot there, like in, in, in practice. Uh, but I'm not going to be surprised when we go live. I'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to try to grief things and um, we might have to react in, in particular. But uh, it's it, it's uh, just one of those things where we need to spend more time with it to make a more well-founded, like, full solution there. So yeah. we're going with the kind of easier, quick, but uh, clean solution of just like, yeah, just teleport people out and, and just, you know, don't don't try to be too clever about it. Ryukashin, Ryukashin in chat says, challenge accepted, Chad. Like, like, there's, right. there's going to be an array of, of, of lightning fast thieves trying to get in and grab stuff before. It'll, it'll become a challenge. It'll become the so if I, yeah, if I, personal hangar thief. Wait wait, 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 wait. If I jump in somebody's vehicle or ship and then I get impounded, I get sent back, will that ship get impounded with me? <laughs> that would be ridiculous. And then it's yours, it's in your hangar. You just spawn it if you want. Watch. It'll happen. Um, in the chat, they asked, okay, so that's how uh, intruders, what about uh, uh, group members, party members? Uh, what's their access to your hangar like? Yeah, so if they're in a party with you, if, so if someone's in a party with you, they have access to your hangar, even if you're not there. So uh, let's say like I, my home location is Area 18, and, and Jared, you're in a party with me. You can go to Area 18 and you'll have access to my hangar. You can go in when I'm not there. You can go in while I'm there. You can use the freight elevator kiosk while you're in there. You can use the item bank. We want to make multi-crew gameplay as 
seamless as possible. So this is something in particular Fantastic. that we were definitely really thinking about throughout the whole process. Uh, effectively, the way that it'll work is when you go to the uh, access elevator in the station and you call the elevator, you're not gonna get a list of every hangar at the station. Like I can't just go to somebody else's hangar randomly. Rather, what has to happen is I need to be in a party with them. And then when I go in the hangar, I'll see my hangers in the elevator list and any party members hangers in my list as well. Oh. This is also another way that we tamper down on some of the, the griefing. It, it doesn't get rid of it immediately. Like I'm totally aware that someone can just walk into the, the elevator. But the point is that you can't just, without someone there, use the elevator and go to somebody else's hangar like independently. However, you can do that if you're in a party with them. That's also a way to manage uh, kind of the, the rights. So if like- okay. You, so we definitely can't have these situations anymore where the elevator, you get into the elevator and then you close the door and then the elevator just goes to the other side of the room and opens for somebody else to get in it. And I'm assuming with the whole instancing of hangers and stuff, they're redoing that system so that that doesn't happen. Cause that'd be a little awkward. You're in a party with somebody and they end up misbehaving. All you need to do is actually just like kick them from your party and very quickly they'll just be removed from the hangar and, and kicked out. So. It's a way for the players to kind of control uh, some of the access that they're giving to other players. But when they have given that, we do want to make sure that it feels like a, a very like a seamless experience. Um, yeah, and again, uh, we actually had a whole thing recorded on that and stuff like this, but we uh, it just for whatever reason it didn't make the the show, and we knew we were having the follow up here. So I'm, I'm glad we got to cover it. Um, the pers for 323, the personal hangar, and I'm glad you mentioned that even when this goes out in 323X, this is still not the end all and be all of this work. Like anything else for Star Citizen or any MMO, the work continues to iterate and evolve beyond this. For 323, your personal hangar is it's one, it's your home hangar, it's, it's at your, it's at your, um, your 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 home your, your home base, whether it's uh, Area 18 or Microtech or, or Lauraville or whatnot, and the size that you get is based on the largest ship that you currently own at the time that you log in and, and pick it. The next question uh, says, "What happens if you buy a larger ship after that? What happens to your hangar if you buy, end up buying a ship that's too big for the hangar that you've been assigned?" Yeah, great question. Uh, it's one of those things that like I should have gone into more detail on in the ISC. It's funny, even when my wife watched it, that was the very first question that she asked me after it was done. Um, so like, I know everybody was like, that's, you know, immediately, well, ah, what if I get another ship or whatever? Um, so yes, we've, we've thought about that. Um, for this release, again, this is just the first release. We're gonna, we're gonna improve on this aspect of it. For this release, the way that it will work is if you buy a new ship, whether that be outside the game or in game with in game currency, and then you go to request that ship, you can't do it if the hangar isn't large enough. So instead, what would happen is you would be given a what we call a public hangar. And a public hangar is similar to a personal hangar. Just the difference is, is that if you were to leave the location, anything that you left in that hangar will be um, cleaned up and, and, and thrown away. So just thrown you away. can't treat it like your personal hanger, like the personal hanger, you can decorate and leave all this stuff everywhere. You log out of the game, log into the game. It's all still there, et cetera. The public hangers uh, aren't like that, although they're not really that different. And what I mean by that is uh, one of the things I didn't have time to really go into in the ISC is, you know, how, how does all this work when you're not at your home location and you're not using a personal hangar? Let's say my home location, again, is Area 18 and I go to Beijing Point and I land. Um, those are still persistent hangars. They're just not your personal hangars. And, and the distinction here is just that if I were to take my ship and land at Beijing Point and then I'm given a public hangar while I'm at Beijing Point, while I'm there, anything that I leave in there is going to stay in the hangar. So let's say I just drop a bunch of boxes on the ground and then Whoa, go into wait. the station to sell some commodities or whatever, Hold on. or do anything else, me and my friend. Then I go back to the hangar. The stuff in that hangar is still there. If I'm going to log out of the game and log back into the game, I actually still have my stuff there. Okay. It's only See, when I 
purposefully leave the location that that stuff is is taken away so okay that's how... so it's when you leave the location see that's that's like it's like local persistence almost like if you're in the location you'll still be able to use that as a storehouse you'll still be able to send everything there and then you know play with it leave it there go get something go back to your ship and it'll all still be there it sounds like a, a public cool. hangar and when you it, say you... taken away mm -hmm. what do you mean you lose them they're forfeit yeah so don't, again don't leave it's something that we want to improve on in the future what we would prefer to have is uh rented storage or, and in fact i'll get to that in just a moment so that if you leave it's more like you kind of have to like buy it out of impounding you know or pay like the fee for for the storage costs for now it's just they're going to be discarded you will get a warning when that happens so that you know that you're going to lose that stuff if you were to leave it on the ground accidentally in the public anger but um for now you, you you're just going to lose them but the that kind of the, what, what it, my point was with bringing all that up regarding your own ship is that it's going to be the same behavior as if you were to go to different location in the game but that is still a somewhat persistent experience anyways while you're there it's just not it's what we won't do and where i think some people have you know kind of imagineered is that like we would like grow your hangar magically larger and like rearrange the things like we're not going to do that and instead what we want to do in a subsequent release is to add a, a whole pipeline and feature set for upgrading your hangers including like moving things around uh and on top of that renting the hangers at other locations in the game like it's not the intention that the hangers are only at the initial home locations it's just where we're starting now because we don't have the time to implement all of the feature work and back end that's needed for rentals and upgrades yeah uh, with including like fees and all over time and all this stuff so <clears throat> what what that means is just that you're going to have the one at the home location now but in the future absolutely we want players to use this as a way of like kind of having a sense of progression in the game so that when you're playing you can accrue wealth you can then use that wealth to expand your kind of area of influence and, and where you can you know tag have extra inventories have extra storage locations and kind of spread throughout this is like literally how we started the stream was talking about this right setting up a hangar in a place where you go often and using that as like your extra outpost stop off kind of thing thank you chad and i think this will become especially important once we bring more solar systems online you're definitely going to want to have i think more hangers across the different solar systems in the game so this is just step one it's not the final you know stop uh, in in this progression we know where we're going it's just trying to find the way to carve up the feature to still hit an initial release uh so this is one of those things that we kind of you know took a step back simplified it for now um but we're gonna do more okay no good answer um good answer steve you mentioned that uh players will be able to go into your hangar and access your inventory or access the freight alerts. Will they be able to access their own stuff inside your hangar? Yes. So if someone is in a party with you and they end up in your uh, hangar, they can use the freight elevator kiosk. And when they use it, they'll access their own inventory. And if they were to use an item bank in the um, hangar, they, they'll access their own inventory when using the item bank. That is something that we actually started so with. So that means specifically, you not only can have a hangar that's dedicated to doing a certain thing, I'm thinking about this from the org perspective, you can also have an account that has all of the stuff for orgs, and that account will be able to go into any of the hangars that the org has and spawn things if need be, whether it's supplying an event, renting out stuff, or, or anything like that. That's pretty cool. That means that even if the player that you know isn't at the space station, sorry, no, space station, home location, I guess, that you're at, but they have a hangar there, if you're in their party, you can go into that hangar, leave them some goods, and then sign off. And those goods should be there for them to pick up whenever you want. That is like kind of a player trading system almost, if 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 that is what he's saying but it sounds like that's what he's saying you can go into your friend's place you can access your own inventory and you should be able to leave stuff in their personal persistent hanger i like that 
that'd be really cool if you could make deliveries to people while they're not at the location. Working on, and in fact, had working was having them also access your inventory. So like if we were in a party, um, you could come to my hangar and then have the choice in the UI about whether you want to take things using the freight elevator kiosk from your inventory or my inventory. Oh, um, that's even better. But we had some uh, concerns about like security, oh. given that party membership isn't maybe as strong of a guarantee be because you will end up in missions or, or doing things with people that are a little, it's a little bit maybe too uh, much power to give to somebody just because they're in a party with, with you to have them access your own inventory. So we still want to do that part. We just want to add more um, security and authorization functionality to be able to say, okay, for this person, they can access my inventory. They can't. Uh, so we, we want permissions. more as far as like permissions before introducing yeah. that part. But sort of, they will absolutely be able to access their own inventory in your hangar. It sounds like you've played with uh, Sean Tracy. Yes. He he, he will just jack all your stuff. This is a, there's so many knock-on effects to this system coming in. And smile the whole time. Oh, yeah. No, he's very happy about it. Very happy when he does it. Um, how many home hangers uh, can a player have, and can they change the location after they choose them? Just realizing that also does a lot to not complicate this, this process from where we are now. Where we are now, if everybody's going in a ship to go somewhere and everybody's hangar or storage is in that place, you can just go into their ship and then access your local inventory and drop it all into their ship. They're only adding one extra step or two extra steps. Use the hangar inventory and then bring your stuff onto the ship. If they weren't allowing people to access their inventories in these ships, then this would get really frustrating. That's actually, yeah, I didn't even think about that. This would almost not even work as a system if they didn't let us access inventories in our own ship because you can't carry all that stuff through the space station. So it's, yeah, good thing that's that's a reality. Just the one for now, and no, they can't change the home location for this release. So like once you get it, that's the one that you have. Again, in the future, we want to do more for upgrading and rental. Yeah. We will think about like moving. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that for the initial one. So there's still some, a bit of design thought about like every single corner yeah. case there about what we want to allow for players. But for, for now, for, for 323.x, um, you're not going to be able to, yeah. to move that, that, the persistent hangar location. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that answer was, 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 was very candid and truthful. But I want to make sure that that's understood because when people make this decision, I want to make sure that everybody knows to consider it. Uh, when you start, when this patch launches, you will get a decision to choose your new starting location for the duration of 323 until whatever comes next. When you choose Area 18 or Microtech or or, or Hurston or whatnot, uh, you are you are locking in your your persistent hanger, your persistent personal big hanger choice. for the duration of that patch until additional functionality comes on. So. Uh, don't lose that information in the and for the folks who are for the folks who are making the the seven minute cut down version. Make sure that gets in there. Twelve minute, okay. indeed. And and just to kind of preempt another, you know, I, I read everything. I, I know like every question you guys have thought about. Like I, I already know, know it all. So like and another thing that people have raised as concerns is, um, you know, pirates. Like what if I'm a pirate and I don't want to like set my home location is forever to be area 18. I'm going to go to Grim Hex. You know, am I just screwed? Do I not get a, a personal hangar? Right back, folks. Uh, the answer is, again, like for 323, we just don't have the functionality to allow for those other locations to have them. But it's not that we don't want to allow that. Like we, we do want to. It's just not going to be in this particular release. Um, are there plans to allow personal hangars that are not at the major landing zones. Uh, uh, in, in, in the chat, folks are asking about Grim Hex, uh, but possibly either uh, at stations or smaller ground locations or whatnot. Uh, what can you tell yeah. us? Yeah, essentially anywhere you can spawn a ship that has hang, anywhere that has hangers, will have personal hangers. Like that's the long and short of it. So the rest stops, Grim Hex, uh, we want it to be a, a prevalent thing to give the player options. Of course, we'll come up with our own decision making as far as the economics of it, perhaps we will consider maybe charging more or less or having different dynamics for 
um, the, the rental aspect of it or, or whatever. Um, but we want it to be a very open thing. We don't want it to be constrained. Like, again, another thing that I've seen people, you know, comment on is that we're trying to push people to play on the landing areas on the planets, um, that we're putting a lot of focus to keep people on the planets. That's not actually our goal here. It's just what we needed to do to get this done for this particular release. We want people to be able to go out in the universe and claim some part of it and feel like that's their home. And if you have a preference, that's not you know, on a planet that's, we want to empower that. We want you to feel like you can go somewhere else and call that place your home, Grim Hex, Pyro, wh whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and have multiple even so that you can bounce around. So if you're spending a period of time in one region of the game, uh, especially like if once we get more, multiple solar systems, we want, we don't want you to feel like overly punished because you, you just have this one location and, you, and you'll never go back to it because it's so far away. We want it to feel like basically we're, we're, we're balancing here. And this, I think, also kind of gets to kind of the core of Star Citizen as a game, which is we're, we're, we're threading this needle of a simulation and, and a, a, you know, enjoyable game experience. So we want to make physicality and inventory tie into that and make the game feel tangible, give you important decisions to consider, have um, risks involved with certain decisions so that you have to be thoughtful and and there are, that feeds into all aspects of the game so like for example let's say i have a bunch of inventory as far as like the guns and loadouts that i have access to at my home location if i'm gonna go take a bunch of missions it's like on the other side of the solar system we want you to actually think about that and then when you're over there, you you don't have as many options as you had before. You can't just quickly change out your loadout. You can't necessarily quickly stock up unless you thought about it ahead of time, right? So we want you to be thinking about it. At the same time, we don't want That's it to just be- That's the whole philosophy of the game. All these things that kind of feel like they're frustrating is because they're trying to frustrate you if you don't necessarily do the right thing ahead of time. I, I like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, that leads to a lot of frustration for me because um, I get that wrong a lot. I, I don't, I'm not used to games like this. So I mess that up a lot. But I like the way that it makes me want to think about the game. Because a lot of times I just mindly, mindlessly play games and I've got games that I have for that. But I, I would like to think and strategize and feel rewarded for the decisions I make in a game. And I've always appreciated that about this and their goal for this super punishing so that you play for like 30 minutes die once and then just feel like okay i'm just done here i don't want to play this game anymore we're trying to find that balance to make it an interesting fun experience have those simulation aspects where it feels like a real space game it's not magical you can't just summon a thing out of thin air there there are uh, important reasons why you need to think about what you take with you but it's um not overly punishing which is like a different track than other games. Like as an example, like like a game like Diablo 4 or like a, you know, many other classic uh, big games, like that game, you just have like this, inf you have this invisible inventory. I mean, you access it from a chest, but the point is you can access it literally anywhere in the world and it's all the same inventory. And that makes sense for that game, right? They're, they're, they have different problems. They have different play patterns that they want to encourage. But for the game that we want, we want it to be a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more tactile, but not as, you know, super punishing as maybe like a escape from Tarkov or something. Yeah, cho uh, cho cho choice matters. You, you obviously want the choices to matter. You want people to benefit from good choices and you want people to to uh, struggle with poor choices. And as always, you, you bring it to- You gotta regret that double dog every once in a while. Back to the point of fun. And that's, that's that, that that area is always the hardest part you know, find me. I, I, I see, I see, uh, who's the person, who's the person that there's somebody that the, the Twitter algorithm has been putting in my feed, even though I try not to see him all the time. I can't <laughs> remember his name, the Game of Thrones guy. Um, uh, but you know, you, you, I'm talking about the game not being a sim or whatnot. And so, uh, certain aspects, yes, are we want to push them to be more simulation like and uh, as close as we can get within the confines of giant shared server MMO technology and then bring it back to the point of fun and stuff like that. So there's always that, that balance there.
Uh, Greasy Khaleesi. Took me a while. I remembered your name. Get out of my feet. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep Just saying straight. him on Twitter. Uh, uh. he just straight up says that <laughs> did chad time it and chime in oh my gosh these people are no holding back anymore i remembered your name get out of my feet yeah i keep seeing them on twitter <laughs> uh, uh lobotomy I thought he's about to say tomato See me, Jared. At least I know uh, he's not on his timeline. Chat asks, how are you going to make finding party mem uh, finding a party member's hanger not a scrolling contest? Uh, he, in the just, he just specifically named somebody in the Star Citizen community that he's actively trying not to see on Twitter, which I think is very straightforward. Elevator, if you're in a large party. Yeah, so whenever you go to the, the elevator access in the station, when you call the elevator, that carriage is your carriage. So when it shows up, it only has the stops in it that you have access to. So by default, if you start in your home location, like area 18 in, in this example I keep using, then I would go in and if let's say I had a account that the largest ship on it was uh, a Drake Cutlass, then I would go in and I would have a medium hanger that I would see in that list. It would say, you know, whatever C Cthulhu dark Cthulhu Lords <laughs> uh medium hanger because that would be like my name or something so, something edgy like that uh dark so the Cthulhu point is, is that XX. like I'll see my hanger in there but nobody else's when I'm in a party with somebody and then I call that hanger I'll see their hangers at that location there as well as mine but unless you have like a lot of party members <laughs> that list is not going to be long and in fact it's going to be much smaller usually usually it's going to be like one or maybe two maybe three you know uh i am totally aware that there are people that go into the server and they just make you know th this giant single server party that that person if you're in that party yes you'll go in and you'll see like a, a hundred <laughs> in that list oh my god uh, I, I don't know i guess you in that case you're gonna have a little bit of a rough time but this is obviously a, a pretty big corner just case. please organize them in some meaningful way like mine first and then alphabetic please um so yeah that's the main mechanism that will get out. resolved as the feature continues to develop and Absolutely. People, people can choose more locations right now in 323 they're limited to the four primary locations but as people begin to be able to choose different locations for their primary personal hangar and whatnot that that problem will get diminished so yeah it, and, it may... and actually i'll use this as an opportunity to kind of re-impress a point which is that it's only the ones at that location that you have access yeah. to. yeah so if i were to go to bajan point and i have a party member whose personal home hangar is at area 18. it's not going to show up uh, yeah it won't show up yeah so like it's it's tied to the to the location so for that reason it does get parsed out and if you know as you as you were to say in that hundred person server unless all 100 people pick the same home location it's still going to be spread out amongst all the locations that they all picked independently um no bajan point is not a new station he's saying bajini oh sorry bajini yeah uh, I, 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 beijing I, this, point this comes up a lot uh half the developers here don't know the the term hurston folks they call it Stanton i know the Green term <laughs> but, but no 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 no, no. but I'm, I'm saying it's it's there's internal name jared's like these people are f***ing idiots they don't know what they're making <laughs> They got more important things to focus on. Uh, folks, yes. are, folks are like, knowing. Like the number of times the, I'm going to be on the show, like, wait, okay, which one's Stanton 2? Stop saying Stanton 2. Yeah, so we, we know it as Arc LEO. So that's. Yeah, Arc LEO. That's yeah. what we call it in so, game. So I'm. I'm so yeah. So the, 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 Beijing you, point. You, you, you can give Chad crap for all kinds of stuff, not for not remembering the specific name of <laughs> front facing name of something that doesn't exist on the internal stuff. Um. I was just trying to think of something else I wanted to give you shit about. Um, how many people uh, is, so yeah, so these parties can be pretty big. Is there a occupancy limit inside the personal persistent hangers? No, I mean, it's not like, uh, it's, it's not like we go to a, a club and it's like, oh no, met occupancy, you're gonna have to wait to get in. There's nothing like that. It, it's, you know, if it fits, it sits. If you can cram, 
a hundred people in there. No, I know the owner too. Like you can do it, but it, that that's no different than right now in the game. If you wanted to go into a small hangar and try to get a hundred people in the server to, to to walk into the hangar, you, you could try it. Right? There's there's nothing that's going to stop you, and that's the same thing here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm imagining what an, an entire hangar crammed, or entire server crammed into one hangar, and the videos that are going to come from that. Um, is that a knock at the door? Hello? Is somebody knocking They're at the door? They're coming to take you away. Is there somebody at the door? No, Just heard a knock at the door. Who is it? It's not a gimmick, right? No, I heard a knock. Having me on? A new alert? It was, literally, it was just a big knock at the door. All right. Uh, so let's see. Something, something concussed Jared. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Did, 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 I, did I say a swear? Is that somebody coming after me? Um, all right. So we've already... We, uh, so okay talk about cargo more people theory crafting here cargo if a missions. player is inside their ship inside their personal hangar and they log out from the ship bed where do they wake up when they come back in probably in the has the ship been stored oh yeah yeah so, where would they? Uh, in this case it won't be back in the hangar for this particular release um again this is just one of those things where uh, there's a lot of complexity in how the I do not know if a character works, reset will reset the hangar. It's a good question. Shards and uh, server meshing and all of this. So for now, no, we're, it won't be that like if you were to log out in your ship in your hangar and, and then log back in, you're going to end up in your ship in your hangar. But we do want to revisit logging in and out with the hangars in particular. So that's Wait. something that... We're going to be absolutely. Was this somebody's way of sneaking in a bed logging question to Chad? Oh my gosh. I bet they, I bet this was. Absolutely looking at more specifically. And if anyone's kept up with my yeah. hot take commentary yeah. Here on, it is. on Spectrum, they'll know there's already some discussions like more broadly about login flow. And this definitely yeah. ties into it uh -huh. about like, just generally how logging in is supposed to work in the game. Uh, and and hangers are an important aspect of that. Uh, but we're thinking how about beds? Much, you know, broader than that. We're thinking beds. You know, the whole game. So this we also need to be thinking about things like beds. haps, like bases. Beds. Uh, all all of it. So this is definitely an aspect. What are you changing, Chad? What are you changing? But in this particular release, it's it's not going to work out like that. You'll end up just um, logging back in yeah. the, the station. Yeah. I mean, oh, I mean, Thelius, thank like, you for the sub. 25 yeah, months. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, Appreciate I'm pretty you. sure if you try to bed log in a ship in the hangar, it doesn't it doesn't let you. Because Portable camping bed, camping right? Just let us whatever. transport but beds. Yeah, as these things become more of a home. For, for, for players as they begin to decorate it and it's like this I can see I can see the desire for that behavior to change which is probably where that question comes from absolutely um can we equip weapons in our personal hangers despite the armistice they're just going to be quiet about that then uh no um I'm laughing a bit because there was actually something of a, a bug that we had recently with people being able to draw weapons uh, in, in the green zones. But um, no, that's not going to be possible. You will be able to use the tractor beams and your uh, arms or sorry, in the hangars to be able to move things around, but you're not going to be able to, to pull out a gun. It's it's not going to be like a stand your ground law zone type situation. Uh, for now, you know, that's something that we maybe we revisit. I could see maybe a different location in the game, like, like Grim Hacks, maybe a more um <laughs> pirate uh focused place having a little bit more stand your ground type laws uh, regarding like what you can do but for the moment it's just going to be uh you can use your tractor beam and and that's it okay so you'll still be able to like one thing we don't want just to, to maybe unpack that a little bit is because people are going to still be able to get in you know through these slightly corner case ways like someone can just fly in or someone can just walk into the carriage if they can draw their gun then while we can punish them for that they could just walk up shoot you in the head kill you while you're just hanging out there moving cargo and then yes they're going to get punished but like for someone that's like griefing they got what they wanted right it doesn't matter if they ended up dying or, or even going to prison for a period of time they kind of got what they wanted out of that uh situation so we're just not gonna have that here for now 
we'll revisit it. I think it's important to note that when he says and... griefing there, he I, I'm pretty sure he's saying somebody who got into your hangar for nothing other than to just kill you, which in my opinion, either they're uh, a hired assassin or <laughs> griefing. But I mean, that could be somebody's mission is to kill you in your hangar. But I do think that they're considering that kind of a safe zone. So in that case, there shouldn't be a objective to kill somebody or rather to steal their stuff. Improved security mechanisms and more uh, opportunity to consider all the, the design aspects of it as well. Gotcha. So when you use the item bank and you call up a rocket launcher, the rocket launcher comes up in a no. crate. No, I mean, you can access them. You just can't like raise them and shoot somebody with it, right? So you can, okay. it's just as if you're in the station, like you can have the gun on your back. You can get the gun out. You can use the tractor beam. You can, you can hold it. You can load the guns onto the gun racks in the ship and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So like all of that's fine. You just can't literally raise the gun and point it at somebody and pull the trigger. That's the thing that you can't do. Okay. okay. Um, last of our personal questions before we, our personal hangar questions before we get to the more cargo, cargo related stuff. Yes. Um, what does all this mean for our OG hangar flare items? Uh, can we use them to decorate our personal hangers? How can we decorate our personal hangers? So first off, shout out to people who, who remember the old OG hangar flare. Um, I remember way back in the day and we had, you know, fish tanks and, and the jukeboxes and, and all of that. And um, in fact, my team was the team that worked on a lot of that stuff way back in the day. And uh, unfortunately, saw it kind of raw over time to the point that we ended up removing it. It just, it was implemented in a way that was very like divergent from where the rest of the yeah. game was going as a more persistent game. Yeah, because you guys forgot what was important. Uh, so Aquariums. It has a special place in my heart, like, a lot of that stuff. Unfortunately, this... Seriously, they're over here dealing with like cargo and salvage and freaking the flight model. When you guys should be spending time on what's important put 50 million dollars towards gameplay where's the aquarium chad we're not gonna have like revisited that the prop team would need to go back and and uh rebuild some aspects of it because they're quite old at this point there's a lot of changes in the way some of the features work uh especially things regarding uh interactions and and usability and all of that so yeah. there's some work there on the the props and interactables team to be done and they've been really focused on the mainline feature work for this release so it's not something that we've had the time to get to but it's not something that we've forgotten about like definitely we we you know remember those things fondly um but it is kind of easier actually sometimes to make new things rather than like revisit a, a lot of old things so uh one of the things that we are adding in this, in this release is furniture so you are going to be able to buy furniture in game at certain locations and then be able to decorate your hangar with that <laughs> couches and, and and stuff like this so Wait, you'll still have some things star that... citizen is getting furniture how many thumbnails are going to have that on there i would <laughs> star citizen upgrading from bed sheet deformation to full-on couch pits sit in the couch long enough to lose your change wonder what kind of stuff that look definitely give us a couch first right that are more social that are more you know interesting make it feel a little bit more homey to to you know, decorate your hangar with and and otherwise i look forward to all the fun shenanigans that people get up to with where they end up putting these things but uh it's 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 not like we definitely want to encourage that kind of thing we want players to feel like this is their home we want players to have some fun things to to be able to decorate and, and place throughout the world um, but for now, it's going to be the newer furniture, um, not the OG hanger. Yeah. It's a, as a good rule of thumb for, for managing your expectations, if you, can, if you can pull it out and hold it in your hands today, then yes. If, if, you, if you can't physically manipulate it in, in the game in 322.2 or whatever patch we're on, then no, that's the stuff that's still waiting okay. to be brought in. That's basically the process. So you can actually have a table in your hangar with all of your trophies from different game events. Because there are a lot of things we've collected throughout the years from taking part in certain things or collecting things. Or even if you go out and find stuff in the game, like artifacts, you can actually have a collection of stuff that you could show off to people when they come to your hangar. That's pretty cool. It's like the beginning of being able to have some pride in what you've done in the game. 
They got to go back. This stuff was built, like I said, uh, so a lot of it was built by our old friends at Behavior. Shout out to Dave Richard and Christine March way back when. Uh, uh, you know, it was built specifically for the hangar module. It wasn't built to be handled, uh, you know, with, 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 you know, hands and IK and, sh and stuff like that. I almost, I almost used up my second square. Um, so that stuff's all got to be converted. It was also built in a different way, different metrics, different different processes back then. So that so that process of of bringing that stuff over. Um, I've seen the zoo. They've they've built what we call it a, a zoo. It's this giant level that's just all of the hangar flare. And they're slow, they've they've been slowly when an artist finishes on a task and he's and he or she has like two days before their before the next task is ready for them to begin. They'll go over to that zoo and, and start working on on converting another one. So it, it is a thing that's in process it's very very slow and it's, it's one of those things that I because that was Star Citizen when I started on so like Chad we have, we have a big affinity for, for a lot of that old stuff I want I want my stupid jukebox I want my calendar I want my cal I want my calendar that tells me what day of the week it is in 2014 and so like that to, to work and I hope they don't fix that I hope it still just tells you what day it is in 2014 um, yeah. That's, like that, that's a good rule of thumb i think for the for the players like if you if you can manipulate it in game now it's something that you'll be able to gain access to and manipulate it then there are going to be some things that you won't be able to move without putting them into an inventory container box um, yes. that i mentioned i think on the isc so there, there, there are going to be some things that you can't just spawn in the into the world mainly because just the art honestly and like the kind of gameplay setup of the thing wouldn't allow it there's just some things right now that really weren't meant to be independently spawned as opposed to like attached to something like what pico uh, yeah. but there's there's uh if you can you know play with it in the game now yes and, and manipulate it then then you'll have access i've, I've been i've been i've been chasing steve I, i've been torturing uh, steve bender to 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 take that old uh a towel the old hitchhikers esque towel from the old thing and make a Melee weapon out of it. Uh, he ignores me and walks the other direction. Um, I why. It happens more and more the longer I'm here, quite honestly. All right, so let's jump into some more cargo-specific gameplay. Um, Chad, are you are you okay if we go a little bit over the past? Over Happy the to. There? Okay. Yeah, like what's going to happen actually is like once I'm done with here, I'm going to get ready and I'm going to hop on a plane and then I'm going to a bar citizen in Chicago. So right. uh, I'm good. Okay, so we're, 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 we'll, t we'll take some, we'll, t we'll do some extra time. It's a hefty trip. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll put some extra bonus time on this one because there are a lot of questions. This is a big topic for folks. Hey, the devs do a good job of going out and meeting with the community. I always appreciate manual that. Manual or auto loading work at outposts, scrapyards, and other non hangar specific locations? Uh, great question. The answer is it won't. <laughs> so if, if there's not a hangar, you what won't have auto loading as, as an option. Um, that Bless is you, a feature, not a bug. Like the 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 point is, is that like a small outpost is not the kind of place where you're going to be doing large trades. We're going to be. Um, this is something I, I'm not sure I got quite into as much detail on the ISC. But one of the big changes that we're making about how you buy cargo is is changing it from being a raw resource allocation. So you won't just be picking like three SEU. And then have the system like automatically figure out the configuration of cargo that you would need to put that into your ship. Rather, the um, the places in the game are going to have certain stock, and that stock will include the box size. So the outposts, the smaller locations in the game are going to only trade in smaller volumes and smaller box sizes. So like one SEU, two SEU, and the idea is that like those. Um, places you're going to just manually load it yourself and you wouldn't show up with a c2 and fill it with like 700 seu of one seu boxes and then have it automatically pack it for you that's not the point of that location in the game it's not the the route that we want that to satisfy it's not what we want to do is differentiate the game we want the locations in the game to serve different roles we want there to be a reason to go to different places in the game, and we want there to be a reason to use different ships in the game. If you're a player that owns multiple ships, you will Oops. be now rewarded for you know good decision making as far as like your trade route considerations and your location considerations yeah. and your ship choices. Uh, and on top of that, if you party with people, you're going to benefit from the let's say the the choices that you have as a group. And if you're on a larger ship, you're going to benefit from them being able to help you. So for the, these smaller locations, we don't this is uh, it's where this picture comes from. 
This is the same idea, and they've been laying this out slowly but surely. I mean, it's something that we've known has been a plan with the game to differentiate locations and make sure you have different types of routes and ships going between them. But this is something they released last year that I think really solidified their ideas for cargo hauling before all this discussion really started in earnest over the last six months. And it shows that they plan on having, you know, large ships going between these large shipping areas, but then much smaller ships that are dealing with maybe just like 20 to, to 30 to maybe even 80 for the bigger locations like distribution centers um, on the moons. And, you know, that all kinds of considerations you can take from ships that have protected areas to ships that have external storage to ships that have VTOL thrusters and are better for planetary landings. All kinds of stuff they want you to consider when you're taking these missions so that it's not just like if you're a cargo hauler or a cargo hauler. If you haul something specific or you haul to a specific location or place or system, that's something that should differentiate you from other people playing the game. I think that's pretty key to Star Citizen actually being interesting and diverse. We don't want there to be like a giant hangar there that like sucks your ship into it and then just magically puts all of this huge amount of cargo volume that's like i guess yeah. just hidden underground or something that's not really the, the point of those locations on the flip side a bigger trade route location like the leos which are a hub for feeding the landing areas those are meant to be big routes so like they are going to support automatic loading we want there to be big ships that go there and get these big amount of loads and haul them around but for those we would like them to deal in the kinds of box sizes that make sense for high volumes. Uh, so like the, the 24, the 32 SU boxes, uh, it, think of it like this, like you wouldn't show up to, uh, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a reference. I don't know if anybody knows what a loves is, but it's like a small <laughs> truck stop, yes. right? <laughs> so you wouldn't show up to that with like a huge truck. I mean, you would with a truck, but you wouldn't then like take you know, 10,000 boxes of Twinkies and then load up your, your truck and then go to another, you know, love somewhere in, in, in this, in the world. That's not how trade routes work, right? Yeah. Instead you have smaller shipments that will, you know, feed smaller routes. Uh, but then for bigger trade routes, we have like these huge, uh, ships that, you know, carry huge loads of freight across the Panama canal, all this stuff. And they have really particular routes that they go to with these much larger shipping containers. So that's the idea here is that like, there are going to be places that just deal in higher volume. There are going to be places that deal in smaller volume and there are going to be some places in between. The locations will have the facilities there that make sense for them. Um, however, that means that like, if you, I totally understand there might be someone in the game that just never wants to pick up a box, right? They just never want to do that. And like, yes, that means that sometimes whenever you're hauling cargo at these smaller locations in the game, like the outposts that don't have automatic loading, you're going to have to take the box out of your ship and put it onto the uh, freight elevator. But that is a pretty um, short uh, loop because the way that it's going to work at the outpost is that the freight elevator is literally attached to the landing pad. So it's, it's a, a matter of a few feet away. Um, it's not like you have to go through this huge experience. You just land, you put the thing on, on the freight elevator, you interact with it. It'll take you not very much time. Again, for the loads that you're dealing with, we're not going to have you move 500 SEU at an outpost one box at a time. It's, these are going to be small loads. Whereas on the flip side, if you want to move 700 SEU manually from a C2, um, at, you know, whatever, area 18 or some other location in the game and you have a crew of people you can do that and you'll potentially be rewarded by having Dude. a more favorable profit margin freaking yeah see that's where this all comes to they need to figure out how to make sure these missions pay a lot but not but also like they have to make these missions pay a lot, but they have to make them take time so that somebody can't do it on their own and make as much as two people would if they were doing it at the same time. So it has to take a while. There also has to be factored in the possibility of dangers for people who want to play turret gunners or um, escorts. There's engineering that might have to take place. Like the balance of these payouts is going to be so crucial to this working, at least 
working with players. I'm sure NPCs can pick up the slack, but we want players, right? Area 18 or some other location in the game, and you have a crew of people, you can do that, and you'll potentially be rewarded by having a more favorable profit margin. Um, but obviously, you're going to have to have thought about that ahead of time. If you chose a bad configuration of boxes, that might take longer. Whereas like if you bought your cargo at places that dealt in larger box sizes, you're going to give yourself an easier time. So we're basically giving the players Thanks. more choices, yes. but also parsing it out to where it makes sense about like why why you would choose certain routes and what you're trying to, to get out of it. Letting us make mistakes like that is going to lead to a lot of people saying, wow, this game kind of sucks. Why did it let me do this? This is annoying and bad gameplay. And it's up to that person to find out what the gameplay, how like it, this kind of information is super key, but we're learning this because we're watching the development. It's always a big question in my head of how do they communicate this to players so they know this is the point of the game and, and get them more involved in thinking of the game that way. Do you just put a, a tip up on the screen for them when they land at a new location? Do you have an NPC tell them when they go to buy stuff? Do you like put this in the journal or in the FAQ or in the new player's guide? Um, you said loves and there, there, was, there was this one we used to go to. I have an association with hostess chocolate pudding filled pies at loves. And I was yep. thinking... Uh, there's probably there's probably a Bucky's out there that's big enough that would that would break the oh, analogy. Oh, a, a Bucky's. Yeah. There, there, there's, there's probably one Bucky's out there that's big enough to break the analogy. Um, <laughs> for auto loading, now obviously the time the the time for an auto load is something we can adjust, and it's something we yep. absolutely certainly will adjust. We, uh, it, it's whatever it is in three twenty three will not be what it is in subsequent no. patches. And, and in just, fact. Uh, I will point something out, which is a lot of people in the ISC, of course, dissected the video to death. And so one of the things that they did is they would pause the video when, when the UI, the different UIs were on the screen and like really, you know, <laughs> yeah, delve into I made like sure pricing. not to look into that because that did not look finished. <laughs> the stuff they were showing us still to look a little scuff. The times there. I will just say all of that was dev <laughs> data. Like, don't yeah. take that seriously because that's just the data that us as as like developers working on the game are testing with. That is not tuned data that the economy team has finished. Yeah. Um, so I don't want people to have certain expectations about timing or pricing, and then get to the game and realize it's different, and then be disappointed or or, or surprised. Yes. Uh, that. Just don't take those numbers seriously, yeah. I guess, yeah. is, is what I... Yeah, it, two things I always want to remind folks of. Sorry for the detour. Uh, obviously, there's the alpha live environment where things will change. Then there's PTU before that. Then there's Evocati before that. And then there's where uh, my, my guys, you know, Will, Dave, Alex, and Toby are working uh, in, in the absolute shit. I'm gonna say it. it, it it's they're, they're saints. They do they do they do work that I Use could not curse. do. Uh, I don't have the patience. For no it. more curses, Jared. That information is all temporary. It's all just don't believe anything you ever see in a screen in a UI screen on ISC. It's way too early in the process. It's it's learn learn the lessons. Don't give yourself the ulcer. Uh, just remember, it's work in progress. It's why we it's why we stick it on there. Uh, and then also, yeah, and, and it, kind of to to go a little bit further with that, the one of the things that we want to be like, kind of just like a philosophy. I'll put it like this: a, a philosophy that we have here is we we want to encourage people to engage with the manual loading. So you should expect that the pricing and the loading times are going to be more favorable for manual loading. If you want to do automatic loading, that's totally cool. We want that to be a viable path. It's not going to be unprofitable, but it's not going to be as profitable uh, or even necessarily as um, time efficient. It also depends on who you've got with you. We're going to have people, we're going to have a certification in GII in our org that specifically recognizes those who are really freaking good at moving and, and packing stuff. We have already have it. It's called the logistician. And... There's going to be a point in this game where you're going to pay good money for people who can get stuff 
spawned and loaded into a ship quickly. Because if you can do with one person what three people can do, that's a lot less money you got to pay and a lot more profit you're going to make. And like that's that is a tangible, better skill you can get. Not because you did a lot of time loading boxes, not because you put a lot of points into your skill tree in that area. Literally just because you think about boxes, you store them a lot, you understand how they fit together. And that's the freaking best part about this game. I'm not good at loading boxes, but I'm super pumped to see how people specialize in this and become valuable to their orgs or even valuable to random players when they can start putting out little beacons and stuff to let folks know, hey, I'm up for I'm up for service. I can help you. Cargo hauling is going to be sick if they can pull this off. As manual loading. So we want it to be an important trade-off for, for players to, to make the, that decision. Guys, I've heard of Tetris. That's the... Um... That's the game where you you jump across the highway with the frog, right? I know what you guys are talking about. Come on, I'm just not that young. In addition to that, we want the the pricing and the load time to be a little bit more intelligent. Like it will take volume into account for sure. So like more cargo is going to take longer uh, and cost more. But the other thing is we want to encourage people to be making smart decisions. Like you shouldn't show up to a place and think you can buy 700 one SEU boxes and the cost to and time to load that is going to be the same as if you got whatever, you know, the same amount, but in 32 SEU boxes, it's much more efficient to move a larger box than a lot of smaller ones. So for that reason, the pricing and timing is going to be considerate of the number of boxes, not just the volume of the SEU. So there's a little bit of nuance there, but I, I want you know to be transparent about like the thought process going in there and like why it is the way that it is and what we're trying to encourage. I like it. Um, let's see. Uh, Rep. Is the mass of cargo still planned to affect ship performance? Hey, getting all the good yes, questions. Yes, it won't for this release, but it's um, something that absolutely we've we've been talking about. Part of the problem is the it's more like we would have done it in fact even this release but oh. there's some some interesting I'll, I'll put it like uh considerations for the physics aspect of it right now in the game uh if it wouldn't be too difficult to make the cargo boxes that are attached to the actual cargo grids impact the mass of the ship but the problem is is that if you were to detach the cargo and just lay it in the ship it won't because anything that's inside the zone of the vehicle doesn't contribute to the mass of the vehicle at the moment. Easy. But that's true of anything. Like you could drop a gun, you could, you know, dead bodies. It doesn't matter. Anything you just chuck into the 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 ship loose is not necessarily uh, contributing to the mass either. So that's like kind of a bigger question about how we deal with mass inside ships. And it also feeds into other things about forces and you know, inheriting forces and pushing things around, which we also want to use to encourage people to use cargo grids as um, an advantage over just dropping stuff in your ship. Um, so it's we're not there yet. We've actually we've absolutely been talking about it actively. It's something that we are planning on um, adding because we want again that to add some interesting decision making as far as uh, not just the the ship. But also, uh, if you load up a ship full of cargo, we want it to fly slower. You're going to be a little bit more like endangered. So if you're a big hauler, you're not going to be as agile while you're moving your cargo. And that might encourage you to want to party with other people who can uh, defend you. Uh, and then also on top of that, it can help you make considerations during the loading process. You may want to spread the, the cargo around in your ship, which will take longer but it'll make it maybe fly better. So it'll give you some interesting decision-making during the, the, the loading itself. Uh, but okay, yeah, not, but not for this release. Are we going to be able to see like our center of gravity and stuff? How deep is that going to get? How much can I tell how the mass changes my performance or do I just have to kind of experiment? Uh, speaking of cargo grids, uh, when we did our two point, two point, two part uh, design brief uh, cargo career, November last year, I think, uh, uh, you mentioned that eventually we'll be able August. to attach almost anything to a cargo grid. Uh, how's progress on that going? 
It's coming, but it's not as far along as I was hoping. Uh, so I think this release, there are going to be some probably notable things that are missing. I don't want to say just yet exactly what, but um, certainly vehicles are not going to be able to be attached to cargo grids. This release, that one I will speak confidently on. Um, and that's just more of uh, considerations as far as the uh, if the entities themselves are really ready to be uh, attached to things dynamically like that for physical reasons, or if they're ready to be just spawned in the world independently like that. So for example, sh ship items, a lot of them are not really designed to just be sat there in the world. They have like, if you look at them, some of the geometry on them isn't even like complete. So uh, it's, it's that kind of stuff where uh, we're not quite there yet. And there might be some other gameplay aspects with that with more testing that we find that whenever they're attached, they cause problems that need to be sorted out. And we might have to pull back on what uh, ends up being literally attachable to the cargo grid. That doesn't mean that they may not be able to be called up on the freight elevator because we can still place things loose on the freight elevator, but not literally attached to the grid in those situations if we were to need to. But as far as like attaching them to the cargo grid, for example, on the ship, and then flying around with them like on the exterior of the whole sea, like in the ISC that we showed, we still have that ambition. Um, it will be probably, I think, a, 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 a progress, you know, kind of work over time as far as like expanding everything that will be attached. Uh, it's still the governing principle, which is uh, if it's in game, I, I want it to attach to a cargo grid reasonably. Okay. Uh, so not a thing that probably but not, not corpses. I know I made that joke actually. <laughs> yeah, like th that I would say is an unreasonable thing, even though I, I mentioned it as an example. You can't, you won't be able to attach a corpse to a cargo grid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared. That transition. <laughs> Will you be able to attach? A spacesuit to cargo grid? Whoever got whoever's on uh, camera control yes. to switch that I'm, perfectly. Uh, so not a thing that probably <laughs> but not, not corpses. I know I made that joke actually. <laughs> yeah, like th that I would say is an unreasonable thing, even though I, I mentioned it as an example. You can't you won't be able to attach a corpse to a cargo grid, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just dead silence. Oh man, that was funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared. Will you be able to attach a spacesuit to the cargo grid? Uh, yes, but that's because the space uh, suit will be a box, right? So those things have already had those considerations made for them so that you can drop um, it on the ground and it ends up being a box. That should be able to be attached to the, the cargo grid fine. Um, what you won't see is the the loose, like, you know, spacesuit that's kind of like as if it were on a person on the ground with like soft body physics or something like that okay. that we don't we don't support so, so again so. it doesn't work like that in game now so you wouldn't attach it to the cargo grid like that the way that you do see those things is they're in the boxes and the boxes you will be able to attach so, 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 so you're saying anything that i can hold or wear is not going to attach to the cargo grid yeah like if you can physically manipulate it now then that's something that you can reasonably expect the, the vehicles, I think, are... Reason are expect biggest. not to attach or to attach? To attach, yeah. Because what if I just hold on to the thing and then I attach the thing to the cargo grid? You have to use the tractor beam right now. Mm. Okay. I think you should reconsider the corpses thing. I'll, I'll keep it in mind, <laughs> but I have questions. Uh... When you think about it, everything is cargo. That's my, that's my Including point. Problems. That's my point. It just seems like you're gonna go, you're gonna go all the way there and then just stop before we become reavers. I want to see a, I want to see a giant reaver hull E, just a giant floating ship of the dead. Okay. You, you switch to his face. I can't. Yeah, stand it's, on my the, face the cameraman. Face. The cameraman didn't face. do it that time. <laughs> just, no, okay. I, oh, he's, he's he's stuck. I, I broke chat. Okay. Um, here, here, here's here's a question. Uh, is there? <laughs> we're, we're we're in overtime, folks. So it's just don't think we're going to get anything good. Is there any future at all whatsoever for cargo decks 
beyond just buying tractor beams and empty containers? <laughs> Great question. I, uh, I think cargo decks are an interesting thing in the game that were, I would say, designed at a time that we didn't really fully understand the full scope of the game that we were going to have. And man, how exactly when we cargo decks cargo... are probably one of the more embarrassing things that have come out for this game. Definitely the most embarrassing location addition. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say the Grim Hex rework, but yeah, the cargo decks are just like, why did that happen? Loop as a whole to like come together. I do think they still serve an important role at the moment, but I no. there is work there to figure out they like what is the best thing for them overall. So I don't want to give a definitive answer on anything like that. Um, I will just say that like I we're totally aware that they they're kind of in an awkward place maybe you know at the moment as far as like what role they're serving and what we intend for them in the future. Um, but we yes we do want them to be no. more integrated no no cargo decks are about 15 pounds of useless stuff in a five pound sack chad i can't see his face if you don't switch back to him he just quiet laughs too uh, chad doesn't I'm make any saying, noise they, so they, they just, could use a pass he's just like like that quiet laugh. maybe he's muted actually Think of like that quiet laugh where you're just like. <gasps> like, are you, are you okay? Are you going to be all right? Hey, don't call my trams unnecessary filler. I'm a, I'm a tram boy. Start in a, a, insulting my trams. Um, yep. uh, what happens? If we bring contraband or stolen goods back to our personal, or back to personal hangers. So what happens if we bring what happens if we bring contraband or stolen goods back to our personal hangers? Uh, are we unable to store them? Do they flag the the the, the popo? What happens? <laughs> uh, so for the moment, mostly it's going to work like the way that it does in game now, um, with the caveat that um, hauling missions in particular are going to be different so if you just stole somebody else's cargo box and store it in your inventory it's not you're not necessarily going to get arrested you won't be able to sell it somewhere so you're going to be like like in area 18 for example but you're not necessarily going to get arrested for that or fined or anything for just having it on your person however uh for the hauling missions we want to make sure that players are incentivized i'll say to actually deliver the goods rather than just short circuit it. So if you were to, let's say, take a, um, a mission from Crusader and you get this big whole sea worth of, of cargo that you're intended to deliver, if you're going to take that to a location that's not the delivery destination, the system will know and it actually will flag it and say like, okay, this is like a high risk thing. You shouldn't have it. And um, you'll, you'll be notified. If you won't be able to sell those at a normal uh, location, or sorry, let me re say that. If you are trying to sell it, it's going to be flagged and actually you'll get fined for it. it. Even if you were to take it to like Grim Hex, let's say, for example, a place that would normally take like a no questions asked type um, terminal and you were to sell it there, you can, but the the price is going to be dramatically reduced because it's going to be considered high risk. So the idea is that we don't want players to basically take these missions and just go to like the nearest like like Grim Hex or something like that and just offload it and not actually take it to the place that uh, isn't it's intended to go. On the flip side, we don't want to overly punish pirates who don't necessarily always know the ships that they're trying to to steal from. And and while I know you know there's a lot of discussions about like how much we favor or don't favor piracy as like a, a loop in the game, we don't want to um, completely ice them out so that if they end up accidentally coming across, let's say, some boxes that were being just stumbling across else, something. somewhere else that they just can't do anything with it, and then it becomes kind of just like random about like what you can and can't steal and sell reasonably, but 
they will be at a much lower cost. So it's not going to be the kind of thing where like, oh, I can just like steal the boxes from somebody else's uh, hauling contract and then I'm just rich immediately because it's just so much and I didn't have to do anything for the time. And then that would just make it to where nobody could ever deliver these things because people are just constantly like camping the the routes that they would be on. So the TLDR is we don't want to necessarily overly restrict where you can store things, but some of the high, high, I'll say like high security or high, high value items are going to have special casing for them. Okay. Uh, current storage crates are indiscernible from one another in name and appearance. Will it be possible to differentiate storage containers via changes to either the name, the label, the color, or some other means? Great question. Another thing that um, we've definitely uh, talked about and have plans for, not going to be in this release, but uh, we definitely want players to lean into the inventory container boxes. And right now they're, yeah, they're, they're not differentiable. Uh, we we have ideas for things like tinting and, and labeling and naming. I, I don't want to say that anything there is like totally concrete that we are going to do it exactly one particular way. But we're definitely going to do something there. We we want to give players a reason to use these uh, more. And then once you use them more, you run into the problem of how do you differentiate between them to say that like, okay, this is like my weapons container or this is like my my armor container or this is my ship items. We want players to have some way to manage all of that to to you know keep it in check like once you get a stickers you know, a few of these going let me put stickers kind of, on my boxes like a whack-a-mole about remembering which one it was and opening them and, and realizing it was the wrong one or calling the wrong one up from the freight elevator and so yes it's something that we're planning but don't have a specific uh solution that we've stickers chad to yeah Okay. Like the dentist. Uh, just a few more questions I think we can squeeze in here. Uh, how much total SCU can the freight elevator hold at any one time? And are all freight elevator capacities the same at all locations? Uh, I don't, they're all different. So there's, there's four different sizes. There's small, medium, large, and extra large. I don't want to speak off the top of my head to the exact volumes of those because I'll probably misremember one. Uh, but they are different, um, and we want to basically encourage people to upgrade. The idea is that if you have a smaller ship, you shouldn't necessarily be able to do huge hauling runs. On the flip side, we want to encourage players being able to call up ground vehicles uh, or smaller vehicles in the freight elevators, which we have not forgotten about. I know that something that players were looking forward to. That's still something we want to support so that the sizes of the freight elevators are designed to hold the, the ships that we want players to be able to call up from. So the small ones aren't going to be like super tiny, but uh, the larger ones were certainly going to be better for, for a hauling like 30, like 32 SU boxes, for example. Okay. Um, let's squeeze two more questions. We haven't talked about the ship lift. So a ship that the, the, the lift that brings your ship up was one of the really cool reveals in the last uh, the cargo episode four weeks ago. Uh, I got two questions about the ship lift here. Uh, one, will we be able to call up multiple vehicles simultaneously on a single vehicle lift? Not for this release. So again, another thing that we we definitely have thought about and considered. Um, at the moment, the experience is going to be very similar to the current ASOP, which is you'll call up a ship. If there's a current ship on the on the landing platform, it'll lower and, and despawn that one, spawn the new one, then raise. Uh, so it'll just be one at a time for this release. But if you can move it off to the side, you can chain the the request to, to get multiple like that. But what you won't be able to do is like say like, okay, I want my Cutlass and I want my Gladius and I want my um rock or something like that and then you know on on no, a big no, platform no, like, nobody like says four they want their, their rock i'm sorry I said no nobody, no no nobody is ever in the world and the that's just no I said i want my rock ds yeah rock ds is the one jared that's what you're thinking did you say rock or rock ds <laughs> yes i said rock okay no, <laughs> rock is fine just nobody's ever said i want my rock ds that's never happened <laughs> no i didn't say ds uh, okay i'm sorry but yeah so like there's some design considerations there as well as technical. 
um, how do they come up? How do you pick multiple at the same time? How do you say if there's three ships on the platform and you only want to swap one of them out? Like all of that stuff just adds like a lot of complexity to the system that we just didn't want to mess with now. We want to keep it simple and, and, and get it working. There's a lot that's already changing in the ship spawning flow right now. Adding this in the middle of all of that is was just a, a, a step too far. So we we are trying to keep this step and you know an iterative step as far as making the changes to spawning via this ship platform but we will revisit this it is something we we want uh, again to encourage people to upgrade to the larger hangers so and, you know we want we want that to not just be useful for big ships but also m multiple and also multi-crewing and, and all of that i'm sorry chat it's not that i don't like the rock ds it's that i hate it um, it's okay. It, it doesn't like you either. It, we're, we're allowed to like some things and not like other things. People think you just have to... I got feelings. I got a It knows feelings. what it did. It doesn't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, is there any other location... Oh, sorry. Last ship question. Is there any other, other location besides the personal hangars where the ship lifts are being used to deliver vehicles to you? Not at the moment. Okay. I'm sure I'm going to get a message about, Jared, you can't talk about the Rock DS. We got to, we might sell two in the next three years. And you're going <laughs> to. God, Jared. Um, all right, last question. <laughs> I was just thinking about what I said, and I am going to get that message now. I'm in trouble. Uh, Fauna, 323 has the addition of, of the Copian and the Merrick bird. Hypothetically, don't you dare say not in this release. Hypothetically, if I go out to the plains of, 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 of Lorville or Microtech and I, I coerce a, 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 a kind and gentle Copian onto my ship and I bring that ship back to my personal hangar and then I coerce the kind and gentle Copian out of my ship into my personal hangar Do we and have then pets? I leave. Does that copian now persist in my personal hangar for all time? Come on, Chad. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Come uh, on. So the, it's going to work. The, the way to think about what will persist in the hangars is just to think about what will persist in the ships because it's identical. Uh, and I think people have probably seen the video of like people spinning like a month collecting NPCs in the game and in their ship. Uh, so for now, for sure, uh, if it persists in the vehicle, it's going to persist in, in the hangar Pets. in this case. Pets confirmed. Yes, I believe that the Copion would persist. Pets I personally tested confirmed. That, so. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it would persist. Um, and in fact, we already have bugs right now about people um being attacked in the station by like the kofians and stuff that are like kind of uh we'll say encouraged into the station by everything some other changes players. with pets so like if you're able to get one all the way into your hangar then like okay you're gonna get rewarded <laughs> uh maybe that's your own security mechanism we, we solved it i just every I just, time you walk into your hangar risk you know, of dying i was so excited for this, for the for the for the for the, for the fauna stuff and i see i see the back so many people like can we kill it can't we hunt and murder it? And I'm just like, that's... We need pets. Just, just, I mean, there you go, pets. We, we, we just want it. to shoot it things, be, Jared. Be kind and gentle. Bring them home. Bring them and things get, and to get, fight let with them in sit this on game. the couch and stuff. And, and, and keep them from falling. Be careful. Be sure they don't fall down the vehicle lift when the door is open and stuff. So I'm just, like I said, all right, I want to be real clear. I'm joking. I'm having fun. But he did not say that's a definite thing. That is clearly an untested situation that I presented to Chad. We will test uh, it he's soon. speaking hypothetically based on his knowledge of how the system works right now. Uh, this is not a guarantee or, or a, uh, a, a, an admittal that it does work, um, but I want all of you, every single one of you to try it when the time comes because I'd rather build little personal zoos than be out there murdering a bunch of virtual dog cat things who just want to be loved. Um, th that's it. Hey, Chad, you want to see my Cobra Hiss? Yeah. Sh show my Cobra Hiss. Look at this. 
Look at that. Look at my new toy. Amazing. Isn't it cool? That is really cool, actually. It's cool. It's got a, it's got a Viper in driving, and it's got Cobra Commander in there. It's really cool. I like it. All it's right, good lighting. Thing. Everybody, that's the show. Thanks that's a lot. Show. Thanks for hanging out at the end of this Friday. I think we're going to do a raid uh, for somebody. I, I didn't check my messages to see who, but if there's a raid, be sure you tell the, uh, 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 spread, the, spread the love and support our fellow Star Citizen streamers in this fine day. Uh, if you haven't watched it, check out this week's episode of ISC. It's all about uh, the water wizards who are, who are, who are uh, doing all these big improvements to the graphics and simulation and rendering for water. Uh, next week, uh, come back to another episode of ISC. Uh, it's going to be on the whole host of arena commander updates that are coming in 323 you thought the pu just had a whole bunch of pu stuff the, the 323 just had a whole bunch of pu stuff it's even got a whole bunch of stuff uh, uh in uh 323 including new experimental modes and new racetracks and a whole bunch of fixes and the return of something folks have been waiting for for a long time that i'm not going to spoil right now because i got to make another show for next thursday and then we'll come right back here next friday and we'll have uh uh, 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 uh all the members of the ui team bone uh, sit in the chair and uh, they'll answer your questions about UI stuff, star map and, and interior map. And you better get more awesome post stuff. 323 so, stuff because that's. Uh, that was Chad. Say hi, Chad. Sharing Goodbye, locations Chad. and stuff. Hi, Chad. Goodbye, yeah. Chad. I'm Jared. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for staying with us for extra time today. Uh, we know how much the, this topic means to folks. Uh, take care. And yeah, I'll see you next week, everybody. Bye. thinking of that disco bird emote with the spinning head. Eh. Okay, sorry. That's my music, not theirs. Um, so this was a lot of info. I actually quite enjoyed what we got to hear there. Um, specifically the access to inventories and other people's hangers is like a really really that's good to hear the more i think about it the more it's obvious that that needed to happen for the way they're changing the system but i'm really really liking the idea that uh for org gameplay that is a godsend i can't wait for that to con further continue to develop what is oh <laughs> um besides that though i think i'm going to have a lot more to say about this on monday if we watch it again we probably won't because we didn't do this live um but this is exciting yeah, I put out a video about this on my channel. I don't think anything that came out in this really invalidates that. So if you want more details on how this works, check that out. But we got a good summary right here. This was this was a solid look at cargo hauling. Best one we've had so far. And from what I'm hearing, they're saying good things.